Hello, everybody, and welcome into today's podcast for Fox Sports Shoals. I'm Mike Ezekiel, your host for Fox Sports Shoals High School Football, and this is the podcast today, episode number two. Uh, today is September 15th, and we're going to look ahead to week four high school football games. And in a few moments, I'll be joined by Matt Selesky again, uh, the co host of the show. And we'll break down a few of the games from last week and look ahead with some predictions for this week. But at this time, I'm joined by UNA quarterback Luke Wingo. Luke, welcome to the show. What's up, man, Mike? How are you doing? Good, Luke. Thank you for being on the show today. And um, let's talk a little bit about the big win we had last week over Mississippi College. 58 to nothing. Give your thoughts. Yeah, man, it was a good win for the team. Uh, it was good, you know, good uh, just to start of the season, good first week, get those first, first game jitters out, get some contact. And... Uh, we played well, great execution, I thought. Uh, the tempo was good on offense, um, great execution, and uh, pretty much everything worked out for us. That was good. Well, good deal. And, of course, the head guy decided to take you out at the first half and let you uh, sit for a little bit. But um, you went 8 for 11 in the first half with 88 yards passing, and then, of course, you had a 55-yard scamper, which was <laughs> the longest y'all run in your career. Yeah, that was cool. Um, just like you said, Coach Falls pulled us out at the, at the start of the second half. Um, you know, it, it, I was going to play the whole game, but it was a, it, you know, it was good for those guys to get in, uh, play a little bit, and get some experience, and uh, it's fun to watch. So. Yeah, we got a lot of guys going in. Um, let's talk about the backups that went in. Of course, Jacob Tucker, he's been your backup for a year, and uh, he's come along a lot since his redshirt year. Yeah. So, um, also uh, Jacob Thomas, a third guy coming along, and um, of course uh, he cut his hair today. I don't know if yeah, you know that. Yeah, I saw it. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's good. And the backstory on that, the reason he cut his hair was uh, because he said he wasn't going to cut it until he played another, made another play in um, in college football, and he there he goes, and he did it. So, uh, but a little friendly competition there. Well, uh, you want to give your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's always good at uh, at all positions on the field to have competition. Uh, those guys are awesome talents. Uh, they're good friends of mine. So it's it's awesome to come up there every day and uh, just work with them at practice and and during games also and. Uh, they did good every time they get in the game, and um, it's also just good to have have that competition every day at practice. That'll, that'll just push you and make you better every day. Right. And it's a great two-headed competition there, but more more like a you know just contributing to the team. You know, you got Luke. You got a different style. You know, you like to throw the ball, and you you can run it too. And uh, Tuck, you know, he's more of a you know he's not as elusive as you are. He's more of a he likes to run people over, yeah. and uh, <laughs> he can play linebacker. I'm sure he could. Yeah, there's no doubt. Tuck will definitely uh, help. He'll lower his shoulder and put it into you real good. So. Right, and uh, hopefully we'll get him on the show soon. And um, But I think y'all complement each other very well. Yeah. And, um, you know, of course, we're ranked fifth in the nation right now. And um, we've got a pretty good team. Uh, a lot of people think we make a win a national championship. But um, let's look ahead to next week to Langston. Uh, what do you think about Langston? Uh, as of now, I don't know much about them. I don't have much film on them. But I know they'll come in with some good talent. Uh, and AI school, so you, you never know like, what you're going to get with a school like that. Um, It'll be tougher than this past week for sure. Um, it'll be fun to play at home in front of the home crowd. I uh, just get things going for this uh, for this three week stretch at home, and uh, we have some good opponents coming up. So just just get better every week, see what happens. Good deal. And Luke, let's end with uh, what do you think about the rest of the season? You know, we we got a pretty good team looking to go ahead and uh, possibly win a national championship, the first one since 1995. Um, if everything works out, it looks like we should win it. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, uh, we have a. Very talented team, uh, for sure. Like you said, we're ranked number five right now. But it's just one of those things you have to come out every week and just get better. And I uh, just focus on yourself more than your opponent. Um, I think we definitely have a chance to win a national championship. We were close last year. Uh, we have a, a bunch of guys that were there and know what it takes to get to that point. Um, I think just just the more experience we get will help us along the way. So I'm excited about it, and we definitely have a chance. It's something special. All right. Thank you, Luke. Um, good recap there. And uh, appreciate you being on the show, Mr. Wingo. Hey, man, I appreciate it. UNA quarterback. All right. Uh, good interview with Luke Wingo just a minute ago. We appreciated him being on the show. UNA football is looking pretty good, Matt. Again, right now I'm joined with Matt Selesky. Matt, let's talk a little bit about UNA football. Well, uh, they started the season. They were preseason ranked number five, and uh, they obviously lived up to that in their opener. Now, uh, Mississippi College just moved up from Division three to Division two, so... Coming in and playing a powerhouse like UNA was going to be difficult for them, and 45 nothing halftime shows that uh, it's going to take a while to get used to this competition, but, but as far as UNA is concerned, they look like they're ready to build off what they did last year, and uh, I think they can go a long way if they can stay healthy. Yeah, solid offensively and defensively. We were just talking about Luke, and uh, he got took out of the first half. Uh, he had 88 yards and a 55-yard scamper for a touchdown, and then, of course, the backup, Jacob Tucker, looks good and uh, complements his talents. 
and then of course solid all the way around. I think uh, on that first drive for the Lions, seven guys touched the ball before they scored, and a freshman, Dejon Duke, scored the first touchdown. So a lot of guys touching the ball, a lot of talent on offense and defense. Well, when you get seven guys touch the ball, that means there's a lot of guys that can contribute. So um, you know, it's, it's never a bad thing to have that much talent, and um, you know. Anytime you put a zero on the board, the defensive coordinator is going to be happy. I know Coach Willis is happy with that result, and For sure. and hey, you know, I think they're going to have uh, they're going to have Langston at home in NAIA school, and and um, I know that as Luke mentioned, they don't they don't know a lot about them right now, but I think UNL will be just fine. And the week after that, they got Valdosta State, who's always a, a tough team in conference, and uh, I think that's what we'll really see how good we are. Right, and of course, um, UNA just talented. Um, again, we'll talk about that depth at wide receiver. Um, in the spring, it's kind of a question mark. Uh, coach Stedman Campbell, the wideout coach, and Coach Gross, the offensive coordinator, didn't really knew what they had at wideout. But um, Coach Wallace and that staff, they brought in a lot of a lot of talent, a lot of depth. Freshmen and JUCO transfers, and they're they're loaded at wideout. And uh, bringing in Taj Kimball at running back, a Boston College transfer, um, and of course Diamond and Lamonte there. That's a that's a great offense, and of course defensively too, uh, shutting out uh, Mississippi College. I think I think they'll be good, and they'll be set and they could possibly make a run for a national championship. I can definitely see that. Well, there's no doubt Coach Wallace has been doing this a long time, and three national championships at the Division II level. He won the conference last year. Um, I know it's been uh, it'll be 20 years since he's won a national championship. I know he'd like to get back and try to get another ring. Yes, sir. And um, looking for a first uh, national championship in 19 years, and they got a good chance to do it. Um, of course, knocked out in the quarterfinals last season, but um, we came up short just to uh, Lenore Ryan. And um, I think they got a great opportunity this year to, to get it done. As we transition over now, um, Matt, of course, joining me last week as the co-host for the uh, prediction blog, or the prediction podcast, excuse me. And uh, we made some pretty good picks. Um, you went 12-2 and two and I went 13-1. and one. Of course, we differed on that uh, Waterloo-Decatur Heritage game, and uh, Decatur Heritage ended up winning big. So pretty close. Well, I didn't know much about Waterloo, and I maybe gave them a little more credit than they deserved, but uh, this week I may have to make a few adjustments to my pick. <laughs> that's all right. Twelve and two is still good, and uh, that's a good start for you. Of course, I went five and six my first week, so pretty bad. That was, that was awful, but uh, I think I made up for it with a <laughs> 10 and three record a couple weeks ago and then uh, 13 and one this week, so we're getting better and better, and um, it's getting easier and easier to to see how these teams go, but the schedule looks a little tougher this time around. Um, let's uh, go ahead and recap some games that caught our eye last week. Matt, where was you at last week? Um, I was I was in Florence here. I was covering the Shoals Christian R. A. Hubbard game. Um, Shoals Christian, they're they're getting better every week. They've still got a ways to go, but um, you know, it looked like they 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 played pretty even with R. A. Hubbard. They lost sixteen to six, um, and uh, if it wasn't for this quarterback Deontay Carter, who Six foot five, two hundred pounds, very athletic. He was just the best player on the football field, and and what's the difference? And if he wasn't there, then Charles Christian had a great chance to come out with a win. They um, they got inside the ten yard line two different occasions, came away with zero points. Their kicking game's just not there. They probably would have kicked a few field goals. So, you know, I, I think they're getting better. But uh, Deontay Carter's a special talent um, from Mario Hubbard. So that that's where I was, and I'm looking to see what they do this week. And uh, you covered a few Charles Christian games. Uh, I think you couple covered the last two. So. Um you know, have you seen them progress and getting a little better every time they play? Or? Yeah, they are getting better. Um, they, they lack some players at the skill position spots, but they're pretty strong up front. They play with a lot of intensity. They play hard. Uh, they have a small little stadium out there, but I'll tell you, they pack that thing out. Their crowd gets behind them, and, um, you know, I, I know the coaching staff's doing a good job getting them ready every week. Um, they're very focused and intense, and like I said, I don't think it'll be very long before they break through. I didn't give them a lot of credit last week, but I, I was impressed how, how they're coming along, and, and we'll see what we'll see what the future holds for them. We'll see. Of course, this week they'll play Hackleburg in a uh, Class 1A matchup. Uh, last week I didn't get to go to any games. I was out of town uh, with the UNA football team as uh, we played Mississippi College and won 58 to nothing. So a big win for UNA. But uh, I did keep up a little bit, and I want to thank uh, Fox Sports Shoals, Times Daily, and a lot of other um, websites and uh, radio stations that kept up with the games and was tweeting the scores out and. I got to look at them and uh, even got to help a little bit, so uh, I was glad to, to get to see those scores. And um, seems like it was a good week last week. A lot of a lot of football played. And one of the games that caught my eye, Deschler and Central, one of the big uh, Class 4A matchups, could decide who runs the, you know, who, who could be the early favorite. 
in that uh, region. Class 4A and Deschler, of course, coming up on top, 44 to 16 in a second half win. Uh, Matt, did you uh, hear anything about that game? Yeah, well, I um, like I said, I was busy covering the game, so I had to stay focused, playing and play out. The, the high school level, we have to keep up with every stat, unlike when That's you're right. covering a college game and there's somebody <laughs> handing you stats throughout. So, you know, I just kind of got, got to do a little reading afterwards. And, um, you know, like I said, I mentioned last week, Coach John Ritter, who left the Red Bay program as the head man to take over the defensive coordinator spot at Deschler. He wanted to get to a bigger program, and, and his defense was unbelievable. I mean, they, they gave up 16 points, but... Uh, Central had to fight for everything they had, and, and, and you know, I just think Deschler's a good football team, and I'm just so impressed with their defense, and obviously scored 44 points. The offense deserves a lot of credit, too. Um, I just covered Red Bay so much last year. I'm, I'm uh, just real familiar with Coach John Ritter and, and that defense and what they like to do. So um, I expected Deschler to win. I don't know if I thought they'd win quite by, you know, almost 30 points, but <laughs> but they're a real contender to win the state this year, so I'd like to see what they do moving forward. And I think so. And, of course, they got a big game coming up with Wilson, you know, in a few weeks, and that that game may very well decide who wins Region Four or Region Eight of Class Four A. I think that'll be the game to watch. And of course, they got East Lawrence this week, and we'll get to that in a minute. But uh, as we transition over to the predictions for next week, uh, I would say one of the big games is going to be at Raleigh Stadium. Florence will be at home against one of the best teams in the state of Mississippi, Starkville. And um, Matt, what do you think about that game? Starkville coming into town. Well, Starkville is the number one rated team in the state of Mississippi. And uh, according to maxpreps.com, they're a top 30 team, uh, I think 23 or... 23 in the nation. 23 in the nation. So, um, you know, I think that just about everybody would have to pick Starkville. But, but you know, I think Florence is going to be at home, and I think Broly's going to be rock and rolling. These, these fans love their football, and they're going to be aware of Starkville and what they bring to the table. So I expect that crowd to get be there and be pumped up. And I'm picking Florence to upset them 34-28. That's a good pick, Matt. And, um, you know, I could very well see Florence getting that upset. Florence, of course, had an extra day to prepare. They played a Thursday night game against Coleman with a 28-14 to win. Coleman, a pretty good team. So uh, they're coming off a big win there. And uh, didn't do so bad on the road against Shades Valley. 38-36, uh, to I believe it was, on the road in their first game. And Shades Valley is a uh, one of the top three teams in Class 6A in Alabama. But, uh, unfortunately, I'm going to go with Starkville in this one. They're uh, Undefeated in uh, Mississippi play, top team in that state. Pretty good team. Um, it's hard to go against them, but uh, I think Florence will put up a competition. I'm going to say 52 to 49. Well, that's a lot of points, Mike. Um, and one of the keys there is, uh, you know, Blake Hawkins, the quarterback for Florence. He he got hurt early last week, but I believe he'll be ready to go this week. Uh, Roland Allen, uh, excuse me, Roland Adams stepped in, starting running back, 20 carries, 121 yards. He really picked it up for him. I know he'll be ready to go and. I'm uh, banking the Hawkins to step in and have a good game. If he's not there, I, I may have to change my pick. But, <laughs> but I'm assuming he's going to be ready to go. And uh, like I said, I, I like Florence in the win, but I, I couldn't blame anybody for taking the other side on that one. Of course, Blake Hawkins, a transfer from Tishomingo County, I believe a three-star prospect. I don't want to underrate him if he's a four-star, but um, play, he's been pretty good this whole season. And uh, if he comes back from injury, I think Florence may could pull out that upset. If you want to call it an upset, I don't know. <laughs> the level of playing Alabama Mississippi is a little different. That's true, Mike. But you're number 23 in the in the country. Then somebody thinks you're pretty good. So, so I think it uh, I think it'll be a little upset if Florence gets him. But but either way, it should be a great football game. Right. And I think Roland Adams come out big in that game. The second game we got on tap, Muscle Shoals. Um, they're going to be traveling over to Athens this week in another Class 6A Region 8 game. Matt, who you got in that game? Well, I got Muscle Shoals to uh, to get another W. Um, like I said, they opened their stadium last week and and they had a hard fought game. Uh, they uh, you know the game was a little more competitive than I thought it was going to be, but so I think Coach uh, Scott Batson will have his team ready to go, and and uh, Muscle Shoals can they can pound the rock, and I think they'll pull out a win. I got it 38-14. 38-14, yeah, they can pound the rock. They got a great backfield at Muscle Shoals and a pretty good defense. So uh, we'll see how they do. Athens, of course, uh, a little background on them. They're one in three this year, but kind of like how Austin was last week, the team they played. They of course won 45-28 over Austin. Austin, of course, losing some heartbreaking games, you know, by within a touchdown of some good teams. Uh, Athens has been about the same. They've lost to Decatur and Hartzell and teams like that. Pretty good teams, but, um, you know, just coming up just short. And uh, I think Muscle Shoals will win. I think it'll be a close game, 24-16. to 16. Well, you got a little closer than I do, Mike. But, uh, <laughs> but well, you know, Muscle Shoals gave up some points last week, and, and so if Athens can hang around, they'll have a chance. But I think I think Muscle Shoals is just too strong for them. They're the 5-8. Uh, now they're 6-8 this year, but... They were the 5A uh, state runner-up last year, and, you know, Florence was a big step up. Their only loss of the season, but, but I expect them to, to get back and uh, 
get the win column again. Muscle Shell's a great team with a great chance to get a playoff spot there in a Region 8, in a very tough Region 8, I should say. Let's move down to Class to class 5A. We got Russable uh, at home this week taking on Ardmore. Ardmore, of course, winless on the season, Matt. What do you think about that game? Well, Russellville's a good football team, and uh, Ardmore's struggling, and I just, you know, I think Russellville is undefeated. Is that right, Mike? That's right, that's they're, right. They're undefeated, and Ardmore's not, and I think the trend's going to continue to go that way. I see Russellville getting another W. I see Ardmore getting another L. I got Russellville 31-7. 31-7, and, um, of course, Russellville, they're undefeated on the year, as you said, Matt, and uh, Mark Keaton has done a great job, the coach that was at Haleville last year. Hey, I think he's done a great job with that program. He's got some good skill guys, and... Um, of course, they had a big win last week against Columbia, 28-8, uh, to to have a second region win. So a win here would uh, really drive them in the region and probably put them in the, as the front runner. Um, as we move on, we got uh, some Class 4A action, and this is a big game in Class 4A. Brooks taking on Wilson. Wilson got the win last year, and a lot, a lot of people didn't expect that. But uh, Wilson is a very better team this year. A lot of experienced guys, a lot of seniors. And uh, Brooks, of course, they came off that loss to uh, Elkmont, forty-one thirty-five, but um, came back that next week, which was last Friday, and beat West Limestone, and uh, they won that one, big forty-five to eighteen. So uh, should be a good matchup, I think. But uh, I'm gonna go Wilson, thirty-five twenty-one. Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be on the other side of you again here, Mike. I think Brooks had a big win last week over East Limestone, forty-five to eighteen, and, and like you mentioned, and the week before they did lose to Elkmont, who's a big physical team. But they were down, you know, 35 points late in the third quarter and lost by seven. So I think the momentum between um, the comeback they had two weeks ago and then the big win this week, I think it'll carry over. They'll go on the road, and I got them in a tight game, 34-31. But I'm picking Brooks in the upset. You're picking Brooks in the upset. And Brooks could very well do it. Brooks um, coming off that win um, over West Limestone, that'd be, that's their first region win, I believe. So, uh, you know, Brooks, Brooks is always a good team. You know, they hadn't missed a playoff in a long time, ever since I can remember Coach Jerry Hill, he's done a great job there. Got a pretty good team, you know, a good running game there. But, um, you know, Wilson, I, I'm too high on Wilson this year. I really think that this is their year. Of course, I was a senior when those guys were freshmen, and I played on that team. So uh, I've seen what they got, and uh, Coach Scott Brown, he's done a great job with that team. And I really think they'll come out and win. 35-21 is what I got. And uh, I'm not for sure if I gave my Russellville score or not, but 35-14, um, I got Russellville over Ardmore. But um, as we move on from that game, another big game in Class 4A, Region 8, Rogers taking on Central. I think that'll be a huge game to watch. Rogers is coming off a big win over, um, who did they beat? They beat, you know, they, they won a big game That's <laughs> against East Lawrence. I think it's 44-0. Uh, they, they look really good, and um, that's an upset special right there, I think. But, uh, of course, I'm going to go with Central. They're coming off a loss to Deschler, 44-16, but they looked pretty good in the first half on defense, and you just kind of lost it in the second half. But Central and Rodgers, that's a great matchup, Matt. What do you think about it? Well, you know, I think Rodgers will be pumped up and ready to go, but Central's coming back home. Uh, they haven't lost at home this year. As a matter of fact, their first loss of the season was last week at Deschler. Um, so I think Central's a really good football team. I just think Deschler may be a step above a lot of the people in that class. So I, I think Central will come back home and get a win. I know Rodgers is very capable, but I got Central 30 to 20. I think it'll be competitive, but I like Central at home. Yeah, I like Central at home too. Central's got a great, you know, they're they're great at home. Of course, uh, they their only loss coming to Deschler, but um, you know, Rodgers is coming along, and Rodgers has a chance in that game, and I think they'll stay in it. I'm going to say 28 24, and I'll go uh, Central in that one. Um, let's move on to another game that has another upset potential. Matt, I think we both like the upset in this one. Lauderdale County taking on Lexington. What do you think about it? Well, last year was a tight game at Lauderdale County, and, and Lauderdale County, I think they won by about 10 points. Don't quote me on that, but um, I know they I know they won. You know, it was it was close, but, but they definitely had the upper hand at the end. But I think Lexington's playing great football. Their crowd gets behind them out there, and they're at home this week. They're coming off a big win over Clements. I actually picked them to win 70-6. to six. I don't think it was that far apart. I think it was 42-13 like or 52-13. 47-12. Well, I can't get these numbers right today, but, That's but right. they certainly had a big win, and um like I said, they've got some explosive offensive player. I'm really impressed with uh, Dakota Saint. They get the ball in his hands. Good things happen. So I like Lexington, and I've got a high scoring game. I got 38-35. Wow, that's a that's a close game, and of course I'm going to take the upset in that one too. And I'll tell you why. Uh, Lexington has really came along. They hadn't beat Lauderdale County in a long time. I mean, it's been a while. I don't know the exact number, but 
that's a long straight Lauderdale County's guy in that rivalry. And uh, Lexington, this could be the year. I talked to one of their old players. He was an old quarterback, Jake Cross. Of course, he's a trainer at UNA. And uh, he said, Lexington, this might be their year to win. And, of course, a couple of Lauderdale County guys there, Drew Crutes, uh, Trevor Collier, of course, they're trainers too. And <laughs> they don't see it that way. But Lexington may have a chance. Of course, Zach and back over at Lauderdale County, great runner, won 34-6 over Colbert Heights. Colbert Heights is a common opponent with those two. Um, Lexington won 44-20 over Colbert Heights the week before, and then Lauderdale County 34-6. So that, that shows the you know how balanced and even both of these teams are. But I like Lexington explosively. You know on offense they got Dakota Saint and you know, Wes Shirley and uh, Tristan Clark guys like that that can run the ball. Isaac Fulton's coming along. Uh, that's a great team. Well, there's no doubt they're going to have to get the ball in their playmakers' hands. If you, if you just go in the trenches, Lauderdale County's got a little bit. They got a few more players. They're a little bigger. They're a little stronger. But I think Lexington's a little more athletic, and, and they're going to have to get the ball in their playmakers' hands to win. But, but I think they will, and that's why that's why I got them uh, coming out on top this week. Good deal. And while I'm on this game, of course, my prediction for that, Lexington 42, all over to County 40. I think it'll be a two-point game. It'll be close. But um, while I'm on this game, I want to make a correction. Uh, one of my buddies, he messaged me on Facebook last week, uh, Sean MacArthur, and he said, of course, he's one of the players at Lexington, and I made a mistake last week. I said Coach uh, Taylor Leathers was the defensive coordinator there, and he's actually the offensive coordinator. And Coach Ratliff is actually the defensive coordinator. And Of course, I complimented his defense, but I gave him the wrong name, so I want to make that correction. Uh, sorry, Coach Ratliff. <laughs> Don't hurt me. <laughs> uh, Lexington's a good team, though, and um, I wanted to make that correction. I think Lexington will pull out that big region win. And, uh, of course, they're playing earlier than they usually do. They usually play that one late in the season, but uh, <laughs> a little earlier this time. Uh, let's move on to the next game. We'll go back up to Class 4A. Deschler, uh, after coming off that big win over Central, will move on to play East Lawrence on the road. Uh, Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, you know, maybe I am. <laughs> I've been riding Deschler's coattail for a while here, but I know they're going on the road after a big win, and, and you can always have a letdown after a big win. It's hard to stay focused week in and week out. Some games are bigger than others, and if you don't have the right mindset on the road, then, then you can get in a closer game than you, you need to. But... I think Dessler's focused. I think they're contenders for the 4A state title this year. And I got them 45-6, Mike. I just don't think that it'll be be too close. I think the coaching staff is just too focused and will have them ready. And so I think I think it'll be a runaway. Yeah, I agree with you on that one. Uh, Coach Jack Limble's done a great job there. Um, Dessler, pretty good offensively and uh, had a great stand defensively as well. And uh, I, I like them too much. I think Dessler's going to win that one 42-13. And like you said, they, they're state contenders. And um, – you know, I really think that they got a good chance to win that, that 4A Region 8 after moving back up last year. Of course, they were in 3A last year, and uh, I, I think they got, like, the fourth spot. You know, they had to go with Colbert County, Lardo County, and Madison Academy. That was a, a great region. It yeah. was. It was. And But, you know, all this new with this new 7A, you know, these teams, some teams shifted, some teams didn't. It gets confusing trying to keep up with who went where. But, but like I said, I think Dexter's a really good football team, and even moving up, I just think they they could be one of the elite teams this year. And I'm telling you, I can't wait to see that wilson Deschler game. That's going to be a great game. Wilson had beat them since uh, 2007, I believe it was, and uh, that was a one-point game. And I remember being at that game. That was awesome. Mike, you know, every time we talk about Wilson, I think that you just get excited because you're you're an alumni, you're, that's your alma mater, you're a graduate. So if Wilson was uh, if Wilson could be playing anybody, and I think you're going to be pretty excited. Well, I, I don't want to sound biased or anything, but, uh, you know, it, it's been a while since uh, Wilson's done good, and I've really seen that program come along, and uh, I look forward to seeing what they do. But uh, I think Deschler will probably win this game against East Lawrence and have some momentum going into that game. So we'll see how that goes. Um, the next game we got on tap, uh, back to Class 3A. Uh, Colbert County is going to be at home, but they got a pretty tough team coming into the <laughs> coming into their stadium, Madison Academy. Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, last week Madison Academy got out early and often. You know, you may have to help me with these numbers, but fifty-seven to six was that the final last uh, week? Something like that. I didn't get yeah. that number. Well, I know they had a um, seven minutes into the game, they were up twenty-eight nothing. So you know, Madison Academy is tough. They're they're the defending state champions. And, um, you know, it's hard to pick against them. They're going to go to Colbert County, and I think it's a fine football team. And I think that, that they can compete for a while, but ultimately I have a 28-14 Madison Academy pulling away. Right. And, of course, Colbert County bounced off that win um, over West Morgan, and they lost to Lauderdale County the week before. And a lot of people didn't expect that. You know, they've been Jekyll and Hyde, like we said last week. But uh, Colbert County got the big win over West Morgan, 52-10, to 10, got a conference – or. A, Region victory, I should say, not conference. <laughs> and then um, 
Madison Academy, I think, is just too powerful. You know, the defending state champions, uh, they're solid all around the board. I think Gobert County will stay in the game for a half, but, um, of course, I got them pulling away. I think it'll be 49-28. to 28. Madison Academy is going to win that one. Um, let's stay in the Region A to Class 3A. Uh, Wes Morgan, as we just talked about, they'll be uh, traveling over to Sheffield. Matt, what do you think about that game? Well, Sheffield, um, both teams are coming off blowout losses last week, so I know that both of them want to get back and get in the win column this week. I don't, I don't think that we're – I think we're looking at two teams that probably aren't going to be competing for playoff spots this year, but – but I do think Sheffield will come back home in 24-9 in a fairly competitive game, but both of these teams have a long way to go. But I like Sheffield at home. Yeah, Sheffield, you know, they, they may contend for that uh, fourth playoff spot. Of course, they got Madison Academy and uh, Calvert County, Lardo County to worry about, teams like that. And, of course, Lexington coming along as well. But Sheffield could still contend, you know. They, uh, they're going to have to step up their game a little bit. Um, I like what they're doing out there. I'm going to say 28-13 over West Morgan. Uh, I got Sheffield winning that game, and I think they'll bounce back. Um, the next game we got another Class 3A Region 8 game. Clements taking on Colbert Heights. And, uh, of course, Colbert Heights, last week they lost to Lauderdale County 34-6, to and they're going to be looking for a big region win here over Clements and could possibly get it. Matt, what do you think? Well, I, I do like Colbert Heights. I'm, uh, I think Clements, uh, they're another team that's a long way from really contending and competing, and um, I think Colbert Heights will – have their way at home. I actually have a shutout here, 35-0. 35-0. Copper Heights could possibly do that. In a, of course, they had a big win over Cherokee that I remember. Um, Copper Heights, uh, one of those teams that's kind of like Sheffield. You know, they may be looking for that fourth spot, you know, continuing with like Lauderdale County, Lexington, teams like that. Uh, Copper Heights still has a chance, but uh, I think they do have to get this win, and they'll have to keep it rolling. You know, Lexington will be a big game. Or, well, no, they that one's over. <laughs> they lost that one, but Sheffield... <laughs> Sheffield will be a big game. That's what I meant to say. Sheffield will be a big game for them. And, uh, you know, if they can get that win, they got a chance. Um, I got them winning this one over Clements 26-7. to I think it'll be pretty close. Um, now, let's drop down to 2A. Uh, last week, Mars Hill, they had a bye week, so we didn't get to talk about Mars Hill, the new program, uh, the new kids on the block. But, um, of course, they're playing Hatton this week. Uh, Hatton is 3-1 and one on the year. Of course, one of their big wins was over R.A. Hubbard, and that surprised a lot of people. So, Matt, Hatton and Mars Hill, who you got? Well, Mars Hill, like you mentioned, uh, we didn't talk about it much last week. They had a bye, and this is their first year of uh, high school football. So your first year is always a tough year. You're, you're trying to get players used to playing football. you got a lot of upperclassmen that haven't played. Um, like, like you mentioned, Hatton had a big win over Ari Hubbard. And while Mars Hill is the home team, I just think Hatton's way, just much too strong for him. And I've got Hatton 45-6. to six. Yeah, and I'm going to take Hatton in that one, 35-14. I think Mars Hill's still a little bit you know, far or a little further away than they need to be right now to actually contend in Class 2A, but, you know, that team, I, th I think in a few years, they're, they're going to surprise a lot of people, and they're going to get a win. Um, I could see it happening. I think they'll contend. 35-14. Um, the next game we got Phillips taking on Cherokee, and, uh, of course, uh, Cherokee, Class 2A, uh, disappointed loss. That was the one game we lost last week. Of course, Tharptown beating Cherokee 9-3. to uh, We didn't pick that one right, but... Uh, you should have stuck with your first pick, I guess, shouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I should have stayed with uh, Tharp Town. But like I said, I thought Cherokee had the skill players, but, but Cherokee's got a long way to go to get stronger up front. Um, I mentioned Shoals Christian earlier. They're, they're, they're pretty strong up front. They don't have the skill players. Well, Cherokee is a team that has the skill players. They just don't have a lot of muscle up front. And, you know, when I saw them put up 20 points against Red Bay, I think a lot of those 20 points were against, you know, ninth and 10th graders of Red Bay. And I, maybe I gave them a little too much credit um, you know, for, for the skill players and what they could do. Not that I don't like what they can do, but, but going against the starters a little different and only scoring three points last week wasn't very impressive. So, right. so I'm going to have to kind of go back to the other side of that. And I, I don't think Cherokee can get it done. As a matter of fact, I've got it 52-13. 52-13. Of course, they're playing Phillips, and Phillips is a pretty good team. Um, they, uh, they got Tyler Crumpton out there. He's their main skill player, and he's getting a lot of looks. And, uh, of course, he's a senior this year, and a lot of people have been looking at that guy Phillips, uh, they came off a loss to Hackleburg, I believe, and we'll talk about them in a minute in Class 1A. But uh, Phillips, they beat Ari Hubbard this year, 26-13, an impressive win. They got a chance to win Class 1A. So, uh, of course, I like them beating Cherokee. I don't see Cherokee really uh, doing much this year. 42-13, I got Phillips winning that one. Uh, let's move on to the next game. Shoals Christian, a team that you've covered a lot and seen a lot of play uh, out of them. They're taking on Hackleburg. And... Uh, of course, we just talked about Hackleberg coming off a big win over Phillips. Uh, they got a chance to win that region, I think. And, uh, of course, Shoals Christian, though, in Class 1A, uh, 
they need a win. And uh, you think they'll get it this week? Well, I'd like to say they could. I, I, I like those kids are fighting hard. I'd like to see them get in the win column, but but I don't. I think Hackleberry's a really good football team, and Shoals Christian's going on the road. It's gonna be hard to win there, but. I've got a 31-19 Hackleberg. That's probably a little closer than a lot of people think. Um, Shoals Christian is winless, and Hackleberg's a really good football team. But um, Shoals Christian, uh, the reason I have a you see a uh, number like 19 out there, they they got a long way before they can make an extra point. They're having a hard time with that kicking game, but um, but I think they will compete. And I think they'll get some points on the board. They really run the ball well with uh, Matthew Woods and, and Dell Thomas out there, and that seems to be their two uh, main go-to guys. And like I said last week, they were inside uh, the 10-yard line two different times, and one time they had a touchdown that was called back on a penalty. I mean, I think it was about a half a yard past the line of scrimmage on a pass from Tanner Bozeman to Dale Thomas. And uh, I think they're getting better. I mean, that team has really improved in three weeks. But but I just don't think this is the team they can beat. Right. And, of course, uh, that, that quarterback, Tanner Bozeman, he is coming along. And uh, Dale Thomas, he's the, that's their main skill guy out there. And uh, shows Christian, they got a pretty good team. But, um, you know, they still need to improve. They're young. And, uh they, they just need to improve before they can beat a team like Hackleberg. I got Hackleberg winning 35-7. to seven. A game to watch coming up would probably be Shoals Christian Waterloo. You know, that might be a, that'd be a competitive game, I think. And Waterloo, of course, they'll be looking for their first win. And Waterloo this week will be taking on R.A. Hubbard. Um, not much doing in that game, Matt. What do you think? Well, last week I went on a limb and picked Waterloo to come out with a victory, and that was one of my two losses. And no offense, Waterloo, but th- this week I got you back in the – and the L column, um, <laughs> R.A. Hubbard, like I mentioned, they got a guy named Deontay Carter. He's six foot five, two hundred pounds. Very athletic, plays the quarterback position. You know, returns kicks, returns punts, does a lot of things for him. And Waterloo's just not a very good football team. I, I don't think they're going to be able to tackle this guy. I think he'll have a big day. I look for him to have you know maybe a couple hundred yards on the ground, maybe a couple hundred yards in the air. So I've actually got um, sixty-two to seven, R.A. Hubbard. Sixty-two. Yeah, and R.A. Hubbard is a pretty good team. Of course, that quarterback they got him. Um, Deontay Carter, he, he he's talented, and I got to see a little bit of him. Uh, I've heard a lot about him. Ari Hubbard, you know, they're usually talented. They're usually at the top of that Class 1A uh, competition, and uh, Waterloo uh, is honestly a little towards the bottom. I think they've got a little bit of ways to go before they uh, can pull off a big win like that. Uh, I'm going to take Ari 49 to nothing. So uh, as we recap it, Matt, um, did we have anything different other than Brooks Wilson? I think that's the only one that we differed on. Well, we also, I, I took Florence when the upset over Starkville, and I think you have Starkville uh, pulling it out. So so I'm going to try to get my bragging rights back for this week. <laughs> we got a couple games different, and uh, we'll see how that goes. Hopefully we don't split them because, you know, we want to know who the real winner is. But, uh, of course, I get week one, so <laughs> that's good for me. Uh, Matt, Matt will try to bounce back this week in uh, week five picks. But uh, as we close it out here for Matt Selesky, our uh, – Florala sports course or sports writer and Times Daily Sports correspondent. Appreciate you being on the show again, Matt. Thanks, Mike. Always a pleasure. And um, of course, uh, for myself, I'm Mike Ezekiel. We got Jaleesa in the studio producing the show for us today for Frog Sports Shoals. And we appreciate you listening in and hope you tune in next week. Thanks.